Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at car accelerating on a straight road, objects falling in a uniform gravitational field, upward motion in a uniform gravitational field, return motion in a uniform gravitational field, and we're going to finish with a summary. So the first example we're going to look at is a car accelerating on a straight road. The Suvat equations can be used in a number of real-world situations for constant acceleration in a straight line. So for example here we have a car and it is accelerating with a ac constant acceleration A. So let's look at an example. A car on a straight road accelerates uniformly from a velocity of 20 meters per second to a velocity of 30 meters per second. Its overall displacement is 120 metres. How long does this take? So we know the car is moving with constant acceleration A. It starts off with a speed U and then accelerates to a final speed V. And this happens over a displacement S. So our first step is to list the required SUVAT values. So we can see that we've been given that the initial speed is 20 meters per second, the final velocity is 30 meters per second, this velocity change happens over 120 meters, and we want to know how long this takes. So we want to know the time taken. So we can see here that the SUVAT values we've got do not include acceleration. And this is our next step, which is to identify the SUVAT equation needed by noting which quantity is not included in the question. And we've just said that we have no acceleration. So this means we're going to use the SUVAT equation, which is S is equal to a half U plus V times T. Step three is to rearrange the equation to solve for the unknown. So we want to make t the subject of the equation. So we're going to take 2 onto the other side to get 2s is equal to t times u plus v. And now we're going to divide by u plus v to make t the subject. So we end up with t is equal to 2s divided by u plus v. And our final step is to substitute in the known quantities. So t is going to be equal to 2 times the displacement, which is 120 metres, divided by the final velocity plus the initial velocity. So it's going to be divided by 20 plus 30 metres per second. And if we type this into our calculator, we get that the time taken is 4.8 seconds exactly. The next example we're going to look at is objects falling in a uniform gravitational field. So objects free falling in a uniform gravitational field with no air resistance have a constant acceleration. And we've encountered this before, and we know that their constant acceleration is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, which is the gravitational acceleration G. And again, as I mentioned before, we will go into this into more detail in the free fall video later on. So because we have a constant acceleration that is equal to 9.81 meters per second, we can use the SUVAT equations to study the motion of the object. So for example, the object will have initial velocity u and final velocity v. It will start off at a time t equals zero and it will reach its velocity v at a time t equals t and we know it has an acceleration which is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared and it will accelerate over a displacement s. So let's apply this to an example. A ball is released from rest in a uniform gravitational field with no air resistance. How long does it take to reach a velocity of 15 meters per second? So we know that it's been released in a uniform gravitational field with no air resistance, so we know it's going to have acceleration g, which is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. So our first step is to list the required SUVAT values. 
So we've been told in the question that the ball is released from rest. So this means that its initial velocity u is going to be zero meters per second. We want to know how long it takes to reach a final velocity v, which is equal to 15 meters per second. It's moving in a uniform gravitational field with no air resistance, so we know the acceleration has value 9.81 meters per second squared. And finally, we want to know how long it takes to reach this final velocity. So next, we want to identify the Suvat equation needed by noting which quantity is not included in the question. And we can see here that the quantity we do not include is the displacement. So there is no displacement. Therefore, we're going to be using the equation V is equal to U plus AT. Our next step is to rearrange the equation to solve for the unknown. So we want to solve for t, so we're going to rearrange this equation to make t the subject. So first of all, let's take u onto the other side. So we're left with v minus u is equal to at. And we can now divide by a to make t the subject. So t is going to be equal to v minus u divided by a. And finally, we can substitute in the known quantities. So we know that t is going to be equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity, which is 15 minus 0, divided by the acceleration, which is 9.81. And this gives us a value of t, which is equal to 1.529 oh, and so on seconds. And since the gravitational acceleration is to three significant figures, we're going to give our answer to three significant figures. So t is equal to 1.53 seconds. So now we've looked at free fall in a uniform gravitational field, we're going to think about upward motion in a uniform gravitational field. So when objects are thrown straight up in the Earth's gravitational field, they experience a uniform acceleration towards the ground. So they still feel a uniform acceleration towards the ground with value 9.81 meters per second squared. And in fact, this is the same as a negative acceleration in their direction of motion. Because if the object is moving upwards, but it feels an acceleration in the opposite direction, this is simply a deceleration, which is a negative acceleration. So we can therefore write for the object that it feels an acceleration in its direction of motion, but this is actually negative, which is why the object will decelerate. And again, we can use the Suvat equations to describe the motion of such objects. So let's look at an example. A coin is flipped straight up at a velocity of 5 metres per second. What height does it reach? So because the coin has been flipped upwards and it's moving away from the Earth, this means it's going to have a negative acceleration with value minus 9.81 metres per second squared. So our first step is to list the required suvat values. So we've been told that the initial velocity is 5 meters per second and we haven't actually been told what the final velocity is. However, we can work this out. So we want to know the height that the coin reaches. So this is its maximum height and we know that once it reaches this height it's going to change direction. So in order for it to change direction, it needs to have an instantaneous velocity which is equal to zero. So this means that the final velocity at the coin's maximum height is in fact zero meters per second. And the other piece of information we know is that the acceleration is equal to minus 8.1 meters per second because as we've said, the coin is moving upwards, but the gravitational acceleration is acting in the opposite direction, so it's negative. And finally, we want to know the height reached. So we want to know the coin's displacement. Our next step is to identify the Suvat equation needed by noting which quantity is not included in the question. 
So we can see here that the quantity not included is time. So we've got no time. Therefore, we're going to use the Suvat equation, which is v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. Step three is to rearrange the equation and substitute to solve for the unknown. So we want to solve for s. So we need to rearrange this equation for the displacement s. First of all, we're going to take u squared onto the other side. So we get v squared minus u squared is equal to 2as. And now we're going to divide by 2a to get that s is equal to v squared minus u squared divided by 2a. And we can now substitute in our known values. So s is equal to 0 meters per second squared because we've said the final velocity is 0 minus 5 meters per second squared it's divided by 2 times minus 9.81. And if we type this into our calculator, we will find that s is equal to 1.2742 and so on meters. However, again, because we're using the value for gravitational acceleration, which is to three significant figures, we need to give our answer to three significant figures. So our answer is going to be 1.27 meters to three significant figures. Finally, we're going to think about return motion in a uniform gravitational field. So our example here is that a coin is flipped straight up at a velocity of 5 metres per second. How long does it take to return to the person's hand? So this is very similar to the example we've just looked at. So again, the coin is being flipped straight upwards. So we know that it's going to have acceleration equal to minus 9.81 meters per second squared. So we're going to do this as we have done previously. And our first step is to determine the time it takes to reach a maximum height. So we know that u is equal to five meters per second. Again, we've said that at the maximum height, the coin is changing direction, so its velocity is instantaneously zero. So its final velocity in this case is zero meters per second. And we also know that the acceleration is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. And we want to find the time it takes to reach this maximum height. So we're going to use the Suvat equation v is equal to u plus at. And this is because we don't have the quantity which is displacement, so we're going to use this equation because it doesn't contain displacement. And we're going to rearrange for t so that we get t is equal to v minus u divided by a. And finally, we're going to substitute in our known quantities. So we've got t is equal to 0 minus 5 divided by minus 9.81. And if we type this into our calculator, we get that t is equal to 0 0.509 so on seconds, which is equal to 0 0.509 seconds, because as we've said before, the gravitational acceleration has been given to three significant figures, so we need to give our answer to three significant figures. However, we're not done yet. Our next step is to determine the time it takes to return to the hand from the maximum height. So again, we need to write down our known quantities. We know u is equal to zero meters per second because now we're starting at the maximum height. So we're starting with initial velocity zero. The acceleration is going to be equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Now, the coin is moving back down towards the Earth, so therefore the acceleration is going to be positive. And we also know the displacement because we calculated it in the previous question. So we know that the maximum height occurs at 1.27 meters. Yeah, so we can see here we've already calculated it and it's equal to 1.27 meters. And the quantity we're looking for is time. So we can see here that we don't have the final velocity, which means we're going to use the Suvat equation s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. So before we go any further, it's important to note that u is equal to zero, 
So therefore, when we substitute in our values, we can see that this term right here is equal to zero. So it's going to go. So we can therefore rewrite that s is equal to a half a t squared. So we can now rearrange this for t to get that t squared is equal to 2s divided by a. And we can square root this to find t. And finally, we can substitute in our known values to get the value of t. And if we type this into our calculator, we get that t is equal to 0 0.509 seconds to three significant figures. So we can see here that this time is actually equal to the time it takes for the coin to reach its maximum height. They're both equal to 0 0.509 seconds. And it makes sense that these two times are the same because the coin is accelerating over the same distance with the same acceleration. So our final step is to add the two times together to get the total time the coin is in the air. So t total is going to be equal to 0 0.509 plus 0 0.509 which is equal to 1.018 seconds and because we need to give our answer to three significant figures the total time is 1.02 seconds, so three significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.